Hello, everybody. Welcome to, to our, uh, our AIM Sports webinar today. This is the 12th of, 2000 and, um, of uh, 2021, and I, and I think number 85 overall. So we've been, uh, we've been doing these regular since, uh, since March um, and uh, March of 2020 and, uh, ha and having a good time. There's been uh, there's been a couple of topics that I've always wanted to kind of chat about, but we've uh, we've uh, hadn't had room in the schedule or something else seemed to be more important. But but uh, one of those is today. So uh, what we're going to talk about is the the AIM Sports Wi-Fi and connecting to your devices with Wi-Fi if it's something that you want to do. Um, you know, some of our devices are, are, are Wi-Fi only. And uh, so I'm gonna tell a couple little stories to kind of get going. It's, it, this is an area that I, uh, that I have no strength in. So we have brought in a couple of people to help that, uh, that have much, much better uh, knowledge about this. So um, the uh, uh, couple guys that are, that are gonna help us today is number one, it's, it's, it's Jeff Wasilko. Uh, let me jump up here. Uh, this is Jeff's second uh, webinar co-host role. He helped us the other day with uh, you know some CAN protocol stuff that he has uh, worked through um, and helped us with. The uh, Jeff's been a a, a a webinar attendee since the very beginning. Uh, yeah. I've known Jeff for quite some time and uh, met him and worked with him with uh, you know other questions and sharing uh, sharing. Uh, answers and results from uh, from data things. So I appreciate that Jeff is here. I'll come back to you in a second, Jeff. And then the other the the other ones with us is uh, Emiliano. Emiliano, of course, works out of AIM Italy. Uh, this is tenth time uh, co-hosting uh, a webinar. So we uh, uh, old veteran here with, with Emiliano. So uh, we won't go through some of the, um, the you know the the the, the deep uh, introductions of, of you two, but because um, we've done those before. But uh, welcome. And thank you for coming up and doing this. I know it's a lot of extra work, and uh, but it's a topic today that I think uh, will, will help some people understand a little bit more about what is the, the AIM Wi-Fi process. Uh, we're going to talk about it as you know, kind of the past, how we how we brought data in, what we're doing now, and then we'll uh, we'll end this hour with with some stuff that we see looking forward, some stuff that's uh, very very close to being uh, you know in place that uh, that you can expect to see in the in the very near future. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about where we're going to go. And uh, this one was a little bit different, uh, difficult for me. And it, uh, and it will show kind of the way that I think about these webinars and how I you know, put together the agenda, uh, what I, uh, for, especially for topics like this. The, um, what I've done is, and it's linked down below, and Robbie will probably put the, uh, the, the document into the link. There it is. Um, the, um, and by the way, the presentation, this presentation will, is, is probably already been linked or Robbie will link it again. Lots of information in this, in this uh, presentation materials, lots of uh, doc, links and documentation. Uh, if you're, uh, you can go ahead and download that uh, directly out of the chat. If you're watching this later on YouTube, everything that we talk about linking uh, in real time for the live presentation, you can find in the, uh, in the description box for in the YouTube video. Uh, this particular link is, is just the MXG, MXP, MXS 1.2 user manual. And uh, a ways into that, uh, in this case, uh, starts on page, uh, page 12, we every all of the user manuals for all of the hardware that you purchase will have these this chapter in it, and uh, so what I did is I just I I started looking at that user manual and and the Wi-Fi side of it, and I thought let's let's kind of walk through what's important in our user manuals and give it a little bit of flavor and a little bit of uh, you know more detailed information where needed. So that's what we kind of built the agenda is through. The normal documentation that you have on all of your hardware that you've purchased to have a, a Wi-Fi device in it. You can go ahead and look at that link if you wish, but uh, um, you know, save it for later and grab it or grab your own user manual that came with your uh, AIM device. It's the same exact text in all of the different user manuals from what I can see. So that's where we're going. There's the presentation link if you want to have it. Uh, again, it'll be in the youth for you folks watching this later on YouTube. It's down there in the description box. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna walk through these, and then Jeff uh, Jeff's kind of lead the discussion, and then uh, Emiliano here to answer some things, and uh, and I'm gonna sit back and learn with the rest of you. This is not a strength for me, so we'll uh, we'll, we'll go from there. What I am gonna start with though is is connection methods. Uh, uh, we'll get into the Wi-Fi side as as the bigger piece, but AIM devices since we started 
have uh, have used several different methods to download your data, download and and of course sending out information up and configurations and all the different things. But the uh, I thought it was uh, appropriate here to maybe show some of those different styles, and um, and and the very first one that uh, that I used and and as far as I can tell was the very first one uh, AIM ever used was a. Uh, was an infrared, what they called a PC loader. It, it, was, a, it was an infrared pin on the, on the, on the Micron 2 the carding product, our, our second product from the, from the old days. And what you would do is you would grab your data and, uh, and then you had this pin, it was a serial connection. And uh, there was a light, a light uh, it, it accepted the light from one of the light bulbs that was on the, uh, was on the Micron. You put it over the top of that uh, far right light and you put it into download mode and it would sit there and flash. And, uh, and it was, uh, it, was it, could, it could be sometimes a struggle. If you didn't hold it perfectly straight, you got a little uh, stray light from outside in there, you'd have to start over. But that was, the, that was the first way of getting data out. And then of course, we had serial cables for the old Drax and, uh, and, and some of the other devices of the early Micron pro or early AIM products. Uh, and then we started the process of uh, uh, that it's still still there today with USB cables uh, was pretty typical. Uh, then we had uh, some other things and Jeff is going to talk a little bit about them a little bit later, but uh, we have the memory key that is available to you. And uh, memory module is the latest generation of uh, external memory that you can put into your systems. And of course, the Wi-Fi the, the, on, on a lot of these products now, where we're going to focus most of our uh, most of our thought here today. So uh, a lot of different ways of doing it. I, the, uh, I, I was uh, this is what hooked me into data. And uh, and working with it was a Micron two and uh, and and the download pin. So uh, really really good times with that. Um, I'll take care of this one, uh, Jeff, and then we'll we'll turn it over to you. Why why do we use all of these download methods? But uh, starting to focus on the Wi-Fi side, the the main reasons you need to connect and uh, and work with things are are really four four reasons: uh, configuration. You know, you, you make a change, you change your LED lights, your alarms, your, you know, what sensors are connected, the configuration. When you want to check all of that, the next thing you might use that for is, uh, is to check your live measure, something we have showed here in, in webinars quite a bit, including last week, where we, we bring up live measures and, and take a look at them. Very, very powerful tool. Uh, downloading your data, of course, and firmware upgrades. Those are the real, re real reasons. And the Wi-Fi has become such a powerful tool that, uh, and convenient. Uh, I will, uh, but there can be some issues with it. And uh, to start this, uh, I'll talk a story about what something I had trouble with, which is what brought us to have this discussion is, when Wi-Fi was first available, I'm I'm not a very powerful networking Wi-Fi kind of guy. It, it, it somehow escapes me a little bit. So I was a little bit concerned as a support guy talking to a lot of people that um, this was going to create a, a a wave of of problems that I may not have good answers for. Right? And um, uh, Wi-Fi started. It all started to work. And you know what? The the calls were just not very frequent. Wi-Fi just worked pretty well for everybody. Uh, a lot of people using it. You have the occasional issues, but um, but uh, worked pretty darn well, except for me. So <laughs> I, I jokingly say it worked fine if I took my laptop and I went to the track and I connected to a name device. Everything worked. But when I was here in my office and I wanted to have a a Zoom meeting or a team viewer meeting, and I wanted to uh, uh, with with a user that was having trouble, and I wanted to show them how to connect and and you know hold hold up a solo or whatever that was discuss that was talking via Wi-Fi connection. I couldn't get it to work, and uh, I dug around a little bit and and I kind of put up with it quite a bit. Uh, there there's a problem. There, there's a possible conflict when you are connected to the internet and you try to do your Wi-Fi. Some of you no doubt ran into this. The, the quick solution is to unplug and get off the, the, the internet, right? And then you have this one device trying to talk and, and everything seems to work fairly well. The, um, but I, I really wanted to solve that problem where I could have the, you know, be, be, have my ethernet connection into my main computer and be able to connect to a device. Um, that brings Jeff into the story. And uh, so I, I was contacting Jeff. Jeff has a, a strong background in this in this world, and uh, I begged him for a, a month or two, right? 
I kept uh, asking him for well down the road. He, he never uh, said no. He said, yeah, let's do it. And I kept putting it off. And uh, we finally, we got together and uh, Jeff's going to tell that story from a more, more technical standpoint of what we did. And now it seems pretty simple. And I wish I'd have done it a lot earlier. So um, with, with all of that, I'm going to jump to the next slide, kind of turn it over to Jeff. Emiliano is going to be there in case we have any uh, aim specific questions about some things, but uh, I hate to start off right into the potential conflicts, but uh, we, we are going to start on kind of this uh, a bit of a negative thing, and then we'll uh, then we'll move on. Some of you may have ran into this. I'd love to love to help you guys uh, be able to solve this on your own in the future as well. So, and Emiliano, we're going to stop start on a bad note and end on a really good note because I think e exactly <laughs> exactly, and and it actually was. Uh, too, so. I stayed up late last night trying to think of how I should reorder this, and I thought, you know what? No, we really do have to start here. So, yeah, Jeff, well, this is, Jeff, this is come a on story in. That you know, that's sort of how we got to this this seminar and, and you know, trying to understand why you were running into this weird problem. Um, and we sort of, we discovered that Comcast by default wants to use the same IP address for their router, if you have a Comcast router in your house, as the AIM devices want to use for, for their system. And so particularly if you're in a situation where you have uh, a wired computer, like a desktop or even a laptop that's hooked up to ethernet, and you're also then trying to connect to your uh, AIM device over the over Wi-Fi, you end up with a conflict because you can't really have two addresses, two you know, devices on the same network with the same IP address. And so what you could find is like, well, you can't get to your AIM device or you can get to your AIM device, but you can't get to the internet. And it is probably is gonna be a sort of situation where it sort of fails back and forth depending on who uh, arc blast. And, and you know, so it's just gonna be really intermittent. And so I, I spent some time working with Roger and we, we figured this out. Um, and so there's a really easy workaround. If you're in a situation where this is a problem for you, um, it's pretty straightforward to change your Comcast cable modem to use a different IP address. Um, and there's a link in the document here, and there's a link that I think will get shared in the, in the chat that has some really good screenshots and will just walk you through using a different IP address for your uh, Comcast modem. Uh, and there may be other providers that use the same thing. So if, you're, if your PC has a, a um, an IP address in that same range of 10.0.0. something, you could end up with the same situation. And, and as I said, it's probably most likely if your PC is wired and then you're also trying to use Ethernet. So you basically have two connections at the same time. If you only have the one uh, wireless connection and you're only connecting to the AIM device or only connecting to your home network, this won't happen. It's really the case, I think what Roger had where he was wired um, to Ethernet and trying to use the the uh, AIM device at the same time. Yeah, being so. able to do this with just a Wi-Fi you know, connection, of course, one is going to be gone and the other is going to start. So you may not have seen this issue, and it, things just worked uh, normally for you. It was kind of surprising to me that um, that uh, as I. Uh, you know, six months or so ago, I started to mention it to Emiliano, and and uh, and it didn't uh, it didn't dawn on him exactly what the problem was either, because this what AIM uses on for an IP address on all of their devices at 10.0.0.1. Uh, uh, other countries don't, uh, and here in the states, uh, other other folks other than Comcast Xfinity don't uh, don't do that. So uh, it, was, it was kind of a it's a bit was maybe was a big uh, issue with a lot of people, but uh, he had not heard of it. So. Exactly. Okay. I said most most providers in Europe might you know tend to use like 192.168 for their routers. So uh, right. yeah, so something to, to file away. And so I think this this actually then becomes a nice a nice segue into talking about what we do with Wi-Fi and maybe some things that um, the things that the AIM devices can do, but that we don't typically do, like have them join a network that already exists or uh, things like that. So uh, this seemed like a really good jumping off point to talk about some of the other uh, Wi-Fi things. And I saw we had some questions about passwords, which we're going to get into as well. So, okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think we so, can oops. jump to the next slide. There, there's the next slide. So, cool. So, you know, AIM devices in their configuration, and it's pretty much the same whether it's a, a large dash or a solo two, um, they can operate in two modes. They can uh, operate in what's called access point mode, where the, the AIM device itself actually creates a wireless network for you and then you join that wireless network and at that point the only thing that's on that wireless network is you know your pc and your aim device and that's i think what most people do because it's the default and it's kind of the easiest but there's another option that a lot of people may not have considered um, that i think is especially useful if you've got multiple devices that you're supporting i mean maybe you're a karting team or a racing team that have two or three cars and it, it's sometimes useful to have a network of your own. And that's the, the, the other option that the AIM devices have where you can join an existing network. 
And that's the screenshot we see below where you have two options there for Wi-Fi mode, yeah, access point or existing network. And so in the first, right, an access point, the AIM device creates a network. And in the second one, it just joins a network that already exists. So I think if we jump onto the next slide, we can jump talk a little bit more. Just it's also worth talking a little bit about sort of terminology, and everybody maybe uses these terminologies a little differently. But you know, you may talk about talk to people about having a hotspot, and I think a hotspot to me means well, you've got access to the internet, right? Because that's what makes it hot, I guess. Um, and so, in that case, that hotspot and it could be something like the Verizon little MiFi box, um, and that creates a wireless network, but also provides connectivity to the internet. It routes to, over a cell phone connection, a cell data connection and gives you access to the internet. Um, and somebody may just say, well, I've got a router. And in that case, you could have a router that to me would maybe mean well, it's just a Wi-Fi router, but it doesn't necessarily have access to the internet. And both of those may have use cases. Like you may want your you know, little paddock set up at, at, the, at the track to have access to the internet, or you may want just a simple connection that only allows your PC and a couple you know, different AIM devices from a couple different cars to connect to that uh, network easily. And so that sort of becomes your choice. So, and you could have a router that could also become a hotspot or you could turn the hotspot feature off. Uh, so yeah, let's jump ahead to the next slide. And so as you're thinking about like how you could make your, you know, your environment at the track, you know, easier to work with, maybe more efficient. Um, if you have a hotspot in the paddock, right? Your cars, you know, you could configure all of your AIM devices to join that. Your uh, PC could be on the network, have access to the internet, have access to download data from the cars or, or, or configure uh, the dashes in the car. And uh, so there's a couple of different options, right? You've got the, you could, your cell, most smartphones these days can be a hotspot, which is really handy. And most, most people may not know that they have that option, but you know, you could just, you know, have your cell phone at the track and, and have a little network between your phone, your car and your laptop. And you know, maybe that makes your workflow a little, uh, a little easier. And then there's little portable devices, like I mentioned, the, like the Verizon uh, MiFi, or, the, or they call it the Jetpack. And then you could sort of go a little further. If you were doing this on a pretty serious basis, you might want to have a dedicated device for the trailer. Um, and so having something that could maybe run off of a big deep cycle 12 volt battery and, you know, or in our case, we actually, the device that's pictured on the right-hand side, we use that in our endurance racing car. And that provides our ability to do uh, uh, streaming video from the car back to the pits. Uh, and so having, you know, there are companies that make devices that are kind of hardened for a mobile environment. And uh, that device has worked really well for us. So, and there's a link there um, for that. So it's kind of cool. We actually have ethernet in our car wired to that uh, as well as uh, the ability for our AIM device to join that network as well. So taking this Wi-Fi concept of, of <laughs> a simple little one device, one computer, download your data, send up your configurations, do your live, uh, live measures to, to, a, to a true networking kind of a process. And it is not all that difficult to do. Interesting. Exactly. And the, the, the one thing is you'd hope your car is not a hot spot because it's on fire. So <laughs> that was my wish for race cars. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's the a, wrong kind of hot spot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. OK, let's go to the next one. So, yeah, and I, I just wanted to show a quick example of like, so say you had an iPhone and you wanted that to be your hot spot for for your paddock at the track. Uh, it's as easy as turning on the hotspot feature and some carriers may, you know, you may have to pay extra for it. I think a lot of plans these days just include it, but you basically just set a turn on the hotspot. You set a password. In this case, my password is learn fast. So if you guys ever see me, you can jump on my network. Um, and then you, if you are going to configure your aim device to join that network, this is a little snippet from race studio three, where I pick the existing network option. And then I give it the name of my network, which in this case is Jeff Phone, which is what you see um, kind of at the far bottom left of the screenshot of the, of the iPhone. It says, choose Jeff Phone from the Wi-Fi settings. And then you just put in your password and you would transmit that to the, to the AIM device, a solo or uh, an MXP. And then uh, once it's joined the network, you can actually see it says network joined. It says it's on the SSID, which is fancy uh, wireless name for a network on the Jeff phone network and it tells me what the IP address is. And so now the, I could have my computer connected to the internet via my phone and also use my computer to connect to a, to a name device and download data or adjust configuration without having to connect and reconnect. So, you know, I think this is a feature that not a lot of people use, but, um, but it's pretty handy. Like when I'm supporting our, um, 
data program with Calm, I generally have three or four solos that I have to download from. And so it's really handy to not have to join each one individually. I can just have them all join the network that I'm on. And uh, it's definitely slick. And one of the things that, um, and I've been testing this here for the last three or four days, just to try to get myself up to speed a little bit. And one of the interesting things is it's just like, uh, it's just like your, your phone connecting to your home network when you get home, right? It, your, yep. your phone just automatically connects. And what I've found is the the solo twos or the 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 MXP or whatever whatever device I turn on once I've turned set up this existing network yep transmitted that to the device so it knows it's trying to connect to a network not to the access point not not be that uh, not a, not be an access point mode right e exactly then from then on and it was a little confusing at first again I'm uh, I'm pretty slow at this the uh, I would turn it on and and our normal work workflow is to go up to that Wi-Fi symbol in Ray Studio. And yep. look for that aim device. Well, the darn thing, because I already did it once, as soon as I turned it on, it was ready just to, it was there, right? And if I turned on all three of, uh, you know, my devices I have sitting here by my desk, all of them just lined up in Ray Studio 3. Okay, which pick, pick the one you want to work with. It's, it's connected, ready to go. It in, I think in the end, it, it might be... Um, uh, a more uh, an easier process than uh, than what we uh, we may have been doing, and and maybe some of you that are watching this might want to think about it. It uh, it doesn't scare me as much as it used to. Definitely, that's good. And I think I mean the one thing that's a little bit of a pain, right, is you need something else to create that network. And whether that's you know a always on base station that you have in your trailer, or if it's your phone, you know. But uh, as long as you have that thing that creates the network, everybody will join it and be able to communicate. So yeah. A little bit of infrastructure to 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 set this up, possibly, but it's uh, especially if you're doing it at the shop at home. It's it's it, you've got your Wi-Fi network you know, at, at exactly. your home office or your and, garage. And, or you whatever. know, something to think about from a Wi-Fi perspective. There's nothing that keeps you from having the same network name in two places, particularly if you don't have them both on at the same time. So you could have, you know, a shop network, and you could have that same network configuration on a on a wireless router in your race trailer. And the devices will just join one or the other, depending on you know which one they happen to be close to. And obviously, that could be a little confusing if you've got both on and the shop one is connected to the internet and the trailer one's not. Right? You might get some weird reaction. But at least right now, the AIM devices can only support a configuration of one network to join. And I think Emiliano is going to give us some good news about that later. But um, you know, so again, it's just something to think about that you could very easily have two base station or two two routers, one at the office or one at the shop, one in the trailer, and the devices will always just join it and make it work. So, um, or if you uh, do it off of your phone and you power your phone, and where it, if your phone is in your garage, exactly, Jeff, Jeff's it, phone is going to be it. Or if you're at the trailer, uh, Jeff's exactly. phone is it as well. And it's funny, you know, we've got to the point now where, like, at least you know, unlimited data or data is so cheap that. You know, you don't necessarily sweat it like you might have a few years ago when well, I only had, a, you know, 10 gigs of data or something. And so the idea of just having your phone be your always on hotspot is, is pretty cool. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, I use my hotspot on my phone for my car. So my car, you know, can stream Pandora and it just joins my phone when I, when I get in the car. And so it's <laughs> to the point where like the phone is like your portable, you know, it's your portable router for sure. And uh, Tice mentions in the chat box over there, you know, it, maybe it's about time to get a decent network in the trailer pit box. I would have not said that a couple of years ago, but I think exactly. the, the prices have come down. The ability uh, to manage it for, for those of us that are not experts has come has come up. Uh, I, I wouldn't be scared of it either. I, and I, uh, I'm not saying everybody should go out and do it, but if uh, if this intrigues you, uh, maybe maybe it is a good time to maybe start thinking about it. Yeah, and I think Emiliano had a suggestion of, you know, you certainly don't want to go buy the cheapest router you can for your trailer because it, it may not be great, you know, or the, the same thing of like a, you know, $10 helmet for a $10 head. Um, <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, get a decent router. The one that we linked is certainly not the cheapest one. It's a couple hundred dollars, but it's intended to be sort of used in, in mobile, you know, put it in the car and have it bounce around sort of environments. But, you know, if you spend 50 or 100 bucks on a, on a decent hot, you know, different, a decent router, you probably have great luck with it. So I jumped back a slide, uh, yeah. kind of uh, the, the sin of uh, presentations, but the uh, uh, just to show it, uh, that link will we'll, we'll include that link in uh, in the YouTube stuff. And it's been already linked here in the uh, in the chat box. So it was just nice want to check it out. Not saying that he's, he's going to try this tomorrow, too. So, yeah, uh, not saying that this is, you know, um, you know, this is not one that we're telling you that you should go buy. It's just it gives you an idea of what is what is out there. And uh, and, and this one we know does work. So exactly. Okay, let me jump up there and then up to here. Let's. Uh, there, there is that option of uh, you know, 
using a you know Ray, Ray Studio, having Windows loaded on a Mac and doing some other things, it has a couple of extra steps. What about this virtualization side of it, Jeff? Yeah, I'll mention it really briefly. I don't know how many people, you know, I'm a Mac guy, so I, I use uh, the Ray Studio software on my Mac under, you know, partly under VMware and partly under Bootcamp. And certainly if there's interest, I'd love to maybe do a presentation on sort of living with Ray Studio in, in on a Mac world. So if there's interest, I'd love to hear, maybe mention it in the chat, but um, so there's a couple of things to think about if you are using VMware and partly we have three links here. The, the documentation team did a really nice job with it. Um, and so the, 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 the biggest thing is in the wireless menu, there's an option that basically is a checkbox that says I'm using a virtualization uh, environment. And what that does is that basically tells Ray Studio not to manage the wireless connection. And instead you would just on your Mac, join whatever network you want to join. If, 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 you're, if you have a hotspot network, you would do that. If you're joining the, the device itself, you would pick that in uh, the Mac's wireless network. And then you use bridged ethernet in the virtualization environment to, um, uh, to join that network. So it just changes your workflow just a little bit. Um, and the other thing I found that really helps if, if, I'm, if I'm using uh, VMware is just having a memory module for my MXP makes my workflow so much easier. I just pull the card out and I already have a smarty cam, so I'm already pulling one card. So I just have a second card that I pull out from my data and then I can load that data um, very quickly from the card reader. I load the video, I load the data and I'm done. And it just means just not having to mess around with wireless. So uh, yeah, it seems like there's interest in uh, talking about Mac stuff. So maybe-, maybe Strong, just... Stronger than what I would have thought. So maybe, uh, maybe we will- um... We will do that. We have a we have a, a, a an internal person here at AIM as well that might uh, might might come on with us that uses Max all the time as well. So cool. we'll see we'll see if we'll see if we can put something together. Yeah. So so we've got those links. I think one of those links is um, is VMware specific. One of those links is parallel specific, and one of them is uh, just generic about that checkbox. So um, just be aware of that. That's a slightly different workflow in that you manage the connect. You actually connect to the Wi-Fi network in Mac OS. And then you just tell Ray Studio 3, don't worry about trying to manage it. Um, you know, I'll take care of it for you. So um, yeah, cool. That's, I'm, I'm surprised about the, the that too. I mean, I, I think the Mac hardware is amazing. It's, I've got a MacBook Pro here and uh, it's, uh, it's all I want to use at the track. So cool. Yeah, and, and kind of funny that uh, we're here talking about the Wi-Fi and one of your uh... One of your tips there, and it's is consider using that memory module as you mentioned for yep. the data download. Uh, yes, we like technology and we like to do these things, but there is a lot of options. Uh, these memory modules are a really cool tool, and um, and especially for you endurance racers that that maybe uh, or or if you're a data guy working with a team or something, boy, it sure is nice to be able to get over there, you know, pop out the SD card, put a new one in and then back out of the way and, and the crew is working and you're out of everybody's way and you can just download, you know, grab the data off the card. Um, maybe it's an option. Uh, yep. you know, I really, really enjoy the Wi-Fi side where I can sit back, you know, 20, 25 feet away and be doing, doing the work I need to do. But, uh, you know, we have options uh, for, for you, especially that new memory module. Cool. Yeah, I, I love it. And it, just the fact that you don't have to worry about turning the car on and then maybe you forget to turn the car off and then you end up with a dead battery because you were downloading and then somebody distracted you. And, um, and I think particularly if you have a smarty cam and you're already pulling a card from the camera, you know, like it's just so much, e it's so easy to just pull a second card. And uh, uh, as you said, right, you can sort of get in and out real quick. So. Uh, Kyle asked in the chat box, uh, can you swap cards while the AIM system is live? It's, it is absolutely designed to do that. And uh, you open up the little door and when you push down on the card to release it, that triggers a, a process where it, where it ends the file and then you pull the card out, you put a new card in. When you put it in, it's, it restarts on the fly, a hot swap, and, uh, and you're, you're off and running. So it's, uh, it's designed around that very thing, Kyle. And it's uh, it's splitting files also also on the device. So uh, when you will go looking for, for for the same files on the card and on the on the device, you will absolutely find the, the same thing. And that's uh, a really deep level of integration that you know popping the card out closes the file on the dash too and starts a new one. That's yeah. um, so, so even your naming and your structures are all are all, mm -hmm. are all the same. Uh, uh, Emiliano, while you're on there, Kyle Kyle asks, uh, what about the Smarty Cam? Uh, pulling the card out of a uh, a current Smarty Cam. Uh, uh, yes, when you open the door and you get ready to close, it does close the video file. Yeah. But it, is it is it quite as uh, quite as uh, 
It yeah. has uh, the, the same. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the smart camera records only only on the on the SD SD card instead of the device that records both in the internal memory and uh, in the SD card. Uh, on the Smarticam, there is uh, the same exact uh, trigger. When, when you try to pull off the card, the, the file is closed. Uh, one, one thing uh, on the Smarticam is that uh, uh, given that the data stream to the SD card is way bigger than, than, the, than the XRK file, it takes a little bit uh, more time to, to close the file. So uh, that's, that's the only attention you, you have to pay. Three or four gigabytes instead of uh, you know, yeah. three or four megabytes, right? Yeah, it's, it's that the data rate more than, than the dimension of the oh, file. Good. Yeah, because it may take a minute while it's got data in flight to just close it and start a new file. And, or... No, it's not, it's not a minute, but uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, if, uh, if for the XRK files, uh, it can be a tenth uh, of a second or maybe less. On the smart yeah. it can be two tenths and three tenths. So, uh, the a hot, a hot, uh, hot unplug of the card on the smart is uh, is a tricky operation. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> And it's not a question about whether the uh, 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 memory module might be supported with a solo 2DL in the future. Uh, I, I do not know. I, I'm not prepared for, for this. Uh, I, I, I have to ask. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay, Jeff, what, uh, what was our next slide? Kind of transitioning into. Do you have anything else to add, Jeff? As we're as we're kind of closing down the you know that little piece of it, and then we'll move it on to talking I, to. I think we're good. I mean, we can do some Q and A and, and talk about other stuff. Um, and actually, in, in Kyle mentions telemetry. There is a really interesting solution for telemetry from. Um, it's the race uh, race studio podium or podium connect, um, and I think I mentioned that in my CAN bus seminar. It sort of emulates a smarty cam, so you can plug it into the uh, AIM CAN bus network. And do telemetry over cell over cell data, um, and it works really well. We I love it. It's funny that one of the things I love it most for is if I'm talking to somebody that's in the car, I know where they are in the track. So if I know that they're in a corner or they're in a busy part of the track, or maybe they're in an area of the track that has iffy wireless or iffy you know iffy uh, radio connection, I can wait till they're in a place where I definitely know the driver will be able to hear me. Um, and it's so handy to just know where the car is, uh, but also to be able to get telemetry, you know, fuel level and oil pressure and all that other stuff. Uh, even, you know, they even show predictive lap data, which is really good for uh, maybe uh, cheering on or, you know, uh, motivating your driver a little bit. So, yeah, uh, but be a, but be a little careful. I noticed that uh, the IMSA event this last weekend oh, at, yeah. at uh, Sebring that uh, a car got found with a, in tech with a, with a device that was sending out the cellular telemetry information, probably that brand that you're talking about because it's fairly popular and it does work very well. So uh, no, that was actually, they, had, they found a Verizon MiFi. I think they just had generic internet access into the uh, car, which is not allowed. Okay. Uh, yeah, certainly. Races. Certainly. Um, so be, be careful. Make sure your rules uh, allow it. But endurance racing, it's uh, yeah, typically very yeah. much uh, you know, ex accepted. So. so cool. Yeah, I think this is a good place to segue into the, the stuff that's coming new. Because I'm really excited. To hear. Okay, Emiliano, let's uh, let's bring you up and uh, and let's chat about. Uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in, in our devices. We were thinking, okay, we, we wanted to talk about the old stuff and then kind of what we're doing and, and some of the fixes, what we're doing now, and then let's talk a little bit about, you know, the hardware that's in there, what's happening now, what's happening in the future. Maybe we can chat about that a little bit. Yeah, as you know, we normally we normally share some some details uh, on our on our devices. Uh, all all uh, our production now, except for for two devices, is uh, featuring a Blue Giga uh, Wi-Fi module. Uh, we started with uh, with the Blue Giga because uh, when we started, it was uh, it was the only one that uh, that, that met all, all our specifications, uh, most uh, most of all in terms of uh, low consumptions and uh, and uh, oh, in terms of uh, a good speed uh, speed uh, transfer speed for, for data. Uh, in the last uh, year, roughly, uh, Blue Giga was, has been bought by another company and uh, they stopped the, the development on the, on the Wi-Fi module we are, we are using. Uh, so we started looking for, for something, uh, something else. Uh, this because we we normally 
do a continuous development of, uh, of uh, all our devices, and we like uh, we like to continuously play with it, with the with the with our with our hardware to to make it better, and uh, to to add the functionalities. Uh, so we we looked for for uh, another another uh, Wi-Fi module, and we found the SP32. That's that's a, a that's a good substitute. At the moment, we 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 are installing it on the two two devices of our production. That's uh, that's the Micron 5S and the the Solo the new Solo 2. Uh, on these uh, on these devices, it has uh, it is featuring the same uh, same exact uh, uh, specification of, of the of the Blue Giga module, and uh, is uh, absolutely compatible with all our with all our software. Uh, I mean, in the future, given given the fact that uh, the ESP thirty two module is uh, is supplied by a, a more reliable. Uh, uh, supplier of ours, uh, we we are going to to install it on uh, practically all our production. Uh, it will not happen uh, tomorrow. It will happen in uh, in the next months. Uh, uh, at the moment, we have uh, a good number of Blue Giga modules uh, available in stock, so it's it's not it's not a problem. We have to front uh, uh, immediately. So it's not a feature, a thing we have to front uh, immediately, but uh, it's it's a thing that uh, that will happen. Uh, it shouldn't change uh, anything uh, from a user point of view. As a matter of fact, uh, you can connect to the same network. You can connect to the same PC with uh, uh, both the Micron 5 and the Micron 5S. I know I know of uh, many 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 teams uh, who are featuring uh, a Micron 5 and a Micron 5S, and they they use them. Uh, uh, they alternate. They use. Uh, Without uh, without uh, any problem of any kind. Uh, uh, Jim Jim has a question there that uh, maybe covers yeah. that exact same question: Is will it, will his current Solo two become obsolete if it relies on the Blue Giga? And and no, I mean we're just changing, but the the, the Blue Gigas that are in all the devices are going to continue to work just like they are, and uh, yeah, everything should be fine. Uh, absolutely, we we constantly support uh, practically all our all our hardware. For, for years, uh, so it will not be obsolete. Uh, it, will, it will continue communicating with uh, Ray Studio 3 in any in any evolution without uh, without any problem. Uh, so. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then the next slide talks about Wi-Fi management uh, from from a firmware standpoint. Yeah, uh, my, my I have uh, I have uh, three slides. Uh, the first one was on uh, hardware. The second is on firmware, and the third is on software. Uh, from a from a firmware point of view, we are uh, in the next uh, I think month, two months. Uh, I think it's. In, it's not a problem so I can do because I, I'm not working on, on those uh, on, on the firmware myself, but uh, I think uh, it will happen. Uh, not, not so far away in time. Uh, we we are uh, giving the, the, the firmware the possibility to switch into another another address family to solve uh, the 10 uh, X uh, uh, network problem. So in case uh, in case you have a, a router or or an access point that generates a, a network of uh, of this uh, of this uh, family, then O O X, uh, you will be able to switch uh, to switch the network created by by the, the devices uh, themselves into another another family. We very likely will be adding uh, three, four different families so so to uh, fix uh, all these problem uh, at, uh, at the very origin. That's good, uh, another 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 thing we are we are introducing into into the, the firmware will be the possibility to have uh, uh, when you connect to an existing uh, network, uh, we will be able to add more than one configuration. So you will be uh, having the possibility to connect to, to to have your device, your aim device connecting to maybe your your network uh, when you are on the track and to your home network or to your shop network uh, when you are at home. So 
uh, having different uh, configurations uh, in the same time in, in, the, in the device would be helpful uh, uh, avoiding, uh, avoiding you uh, to uh, constantly change uh, the configuration of the solo. I mean, co connecting to the, 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 the network on the trailer or the network uh, you have uh, at home, it's, it's already possible now, but you have, uh, you have to use your Race to the Tree software and to uh, reset the configuration of the solo and uh, send the solo uh, a new configuration to connect to, to an existing network. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite a long job that we can avoid uh, having, uh, having the devices, uh, uh, the possibility to connect to, uh, to more more than one than one network, uh, and this is so. This is what you're what you're talking about here to tie it back to the beginning of our presentation today. The mm -hmm. the issue that I had where uh, that ten point zero point zero point x trying to connect to my home and uh, and the aim device, uh, yeah. the device will just come up and 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 say there's a conflict. It, the firmware will will give it those options, and you could just pick the next one down, and uh, boom, it's resolved, and you're and you're off and running instead of having to uh, change your network at, yeah, at your, think, your, uh, your address at home. I I think uh, Race Studio Three will tell you that uh, there is a conflict when when uh, he tries to connect to to two different networks with with the same IP addressing. Uh, the device itself uh, cannot uh, cannot state uh, only by the presence of another network that uh, the other network feature features uh, the same uh, addressing family. So uh, it will be the race view tree that uh, will uh, trigger an icon and will inform you you need to you need to do this operation on the solo. But yeah. the problem you had. Uh, will be will be addressed uh, just going into the device and the, while using the, the, the menu using the, the configuration in in the device you will be able to, to place the the, the the M device into another network IP family so uh, you will not be having the, the, the problem anymore Again, many of you may never run into this, but it, it's just a problem that some people are running into that uh, that, that we're trying to solve. Uh, there's a question in the Q and A box there for you. And, uh, and uh, I, I just uh, wanted to to add a detail on the on the second thing that we are we are adding on the on the firmware. The device will not be able to connect to more than one network to more than one existing network at the same time. Yeah. Uh, it will be choosing uh, one of, uh, of the networks that uh, you will configure it to, to connect to. OK, there's a there question. A, uh, Eldon mentioned in the chat, which I think is a, is a good thing maybe to, to talk about with Emiliano, is the, maybe it would be good to have the ability to prioritize which wireless network you connect to if, if the AIM devices can have two or three stored to be able to say, we, this is my priority one, this is my second one, this is my third one. Yeah, very likely the priority will be the one uh, that we that uh, will be inserted by, by the customer, but yeah. I think uh, we may end, uh, end also in choosing the network that, uh, that's stronger. Uh, the device uh, can, uh, can measure the power of the network mm -hmm. uh, that it sees, so it can decide to, to connect to the stronger one. Yep. Uh, but uh, the, the priority inserted by by using race to the tree can be an option as well. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think that would be good if, if the user could pick a priority or just say connect to the strongest one. You know, very, very likely is the most uh, intuitive uh, way to make it work. Yeah. Okay, Tim asks the the ESP thirty two chip supports Bluetooth as well. Plans? Question mark. Uh, no, at the moment I don't. I do not think it supports uh, Bluetooth, and and it's not. Uh, it's not in the plans I know. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> I we do don't... not know everything. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. So we don't have a great answer for that yet, Tim. But uh, we're, we'll probably look into it. Okay, so there's the firmware on the Wi-Fi management side. And what about uh, what's kind of coming in the future on the on the Wi-Fi management on the software side? Uh, yeah, in the software uh, we are we are releasing a new version very very soon of uh, Race Studio Three, both uh, both uh, release and uh, and beta. And uh, in these uh, releases, I have uh, been working with with the team to improve uh, the Wi-Fi a little bit. 
uh, we improve the the scan speed for for aim devices in, in the network so it will be it would be faster when you are using uh, you when you are using uh, windows in uh, as a virtualizer as a, as it happens on, on a mac and uh, we have made we have made uh, the initial wi-fi connection a little bit quicker so the start of communication with the devices will be will be a little bit faster uh, we improved a little bit the password verification for for the wi-fi networks and uh, just i'm just uh, just reading uh, ah, okay, there there has been a bug uh, recently introduced uh, for, for which uh, when you're choosing the Wi-Fi menu, you normally the race view tree uh, separates uh, devices by by other networks. Uh, it uh, for for a bug that uh, splitting uh, was not uh, was not uh, in anymore, and uh, I place it back. Uh, and then uh, the, the last uh, the last point is uh, uh, is what I was saying before. Now the race to tree will be informing you when you when you have an IP conflict uh, uh, in uh, when maybe you have two networks, two network two network cards, and uh, you connect uh, the two network cards to uh, two different networks with the same IP addressing. Race to tree will will be informing you. Uh, upon a possible problem uh, on that uh, on that network, it's not forbidding you the connection, but it's informing you that uh, that you very likely will encounter a, a problem while trying to communicate. I think that's and great. That's, uh, that's, great an idea. that's an operating system uh, problem because uh, uh, the operating system uh, cannot uh, distinguish when it's connected to to networks with the same IP addressing. It cannot uh, distinguish which are the devices connected to uh, the first one and uh, the other connected to the second one. So uh, the, the the routing of the of your communication is not uh, is not even. It's not ensured. Exactly. The um, uh, one thing we kind of skipped uh, skipped over a little bit was was the password protection uh, with mm -hmm. the networks yeah. and the um, and you get a name device and you and you connect it for the first time you, you got your new solo or whatever you connect and you can and it is shipped with with uh, with no password protection on it so if you were just to fire up your solo to head out to the track and uh, and turn it on in the in the pit area or in the paddock. Uh, Anybody that is there with a laptop could connect to it and uh, and change your configuration or uh, or download your data, yeah. right? Uh, of course, almost everybody doesn't care, and and uh, and if it's off, they can't get at it, right? So, it, the password maybe you don't want it, but uh, we we would suggest that you do the do the password thing, and uh, you know make it a pretty basic password. It's not like you're losing, uh, you know, it's not like it's a. Uh, for most of us, our, our data, while valuable, is not uh, what somebody would probably want to steal too much. So, but putting it on there is, is good. And then you, it, your laptop, your your computer remembers that password after the first time you plug it in. So, so it's not like it's something you have to plug in all the time and it slows down your process. The um, but occasionally I've had some folks that um, that have a problem and they maybe they. Uh, uh, you know, the, they brought a bought a new laptop and they've had this Wi-Fi password on their on their uh, AIM device for a year, and now all of a sudden they can't connect and and the and they can't remember what the password was, right? So the um, the what do you do, right? Uh, the the, um, the on your AIM device, if you go into the menu item and you um, and you run over to the Wi-Fi icon and jump into the menu, you know, Wi-Fi menu item. There is a uh, some settings, and I and I wanted to talk about this one. It's it's reset Wi-Fi config is is what it's called, and um, uh, as as a support guy, when I when people call in and they and they all of a sudden my Wi-Fi is not working well or something, one of the things we have you do fairly quickly is go onto your AIM device and reset that Wi-Fi config. It's like rebooting your router, right? And um, that does two things. Number one, it resets it, and and probably your Wi-Fi problem is going to go away. But the other reason to use that piece is if you've lost your password and you don't know what it is and you've got your hardware in your hand or it's in your car, you run that and it and one of the other op things it does when it resets that Wi-Fi config is it blanks out the password. It doesn't lose any data. It doesn't change any configurations and anything, but it does clear the password uh, set. So 
as soon as you would do that Wi-Fi reset config, jump back, you know, then connect and uh, and jump into the tab that uh, Wi-Fi and properties tab, and reset a new password. And uh, so that's a good uh, a good tip to have if you can't remember that password and you've got a new laptop or something and you're frustrated, boy, do that run that Wi-Fi reset Wi-Fi config option. And number one, it restarts the the internal chip, the you know, the router, and uh, and and resets the password to nothing. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and if you're using an Evo, you can go, you can connect it to to the USB and just do the same operation using the rest of the tree software. Great point. Yeah, yeah. Or if you didn't do the reset Wi-Fi config and you forgot your password, cable up to it, and then you can, uh, uh, of course, reset it there as well. So uh, there's a question in the question box as we're kind of winding down just a little bit. The um, Tice has a question: it, Which USB standard is used in the loggers? USB two or three? And what's faster? And then uh, USB or Wi-Fi download? What? How does our Wi-Fi compare to uh, that cabled connection, uh, Emiliano? Have you done any tests and have good numbers we can share? Uh, it, the device is connected uh, using the USB two standard, but uh, I don't think we we get the full uh, the full USB USB two speeds uh, because of the connectors. Because uh, we to, to get uh, to get the um, the maximum USB to speed, it's, uh, it's not possible with the connectors that, that are normally used in, uh, in motorsports. Uh, but, uh, and uh, if you want a comparison between the USB and Wi-Fi, for sure, USB is faster. I think it's uh, twice as fast, uh, roughly. It has been my experience, though, that when we first started with Wi-Fi, you know, what, uh, four, four or five years ago, that the the difference was greater, and the the Wi-Fi improvements you've been making yep. ha have and, yep. and more coming have have brought those closer and closer. That direct connection probably is uh, is going to be faster, but it's uh, it, for the file sizes we're moving that are you know five or six megabytes or whatever, you know, not huge stuff. Uh, I can't hardly tell the difference when I download a a, a normal uh, you know XRK file from a from a system. So no, the, the, the most of the time is is time to get to the device uh, to to organize a connection and uh, to prepare to prepare for the download. So it's not a transfer the the pure transfer time the, the time you 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 spend for 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 downloading. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Jeff, you have anything else that you'd like to add as we kind of uh, starting to close this up? Did you see any other questions in the chat box? No, but no other questions. And I think that covered the one thing that we uh, that we had talked about. Uh, you know, that we maybe skipped over. Um, it is worth maybe just clarifying because there are two passwords, right? There's the they, what they call what's called the device password in Ray Studio three, and that's the password that you have to know to connect to that particular device. If you're using the uh, Wi-Fi mode of existing network where the aim is going to join a network that another access point is created. There's another password field involved with that. And that's what's called the Wi-Fi password. And they're not the same. So it's, you know, it's good to know uh, the difference between those two if you do uh, start to use that existing network mode. But uh, yeah, the, the first password is uh, the password of the network of the uh, what's called SSID password. Yep. And uh, it's the same password that, uh, that you would place uh, uh, using the um, operating system connection menu. Uh, if you connect to a network, uh, you, you have to, to insert the, the password of the, the SSID. The second one is uh, just uh, to avoid the confusion uh, when uh, Suppose suppose you have three four four devices on the same network and that's the network of your team. Uh, if you want uh, two teammates uh, to avoid confusion when when connecting the, each of them to their own uh, go kart or to their own uh, car, so they will be sure they they download their data and not uh, not the teammates' uh, data. That, that's the device password. Or you, obviously, the, the you know the, that next operation being you have a large team, maybe six or seven cars and different data guys mm -hmm. working on it, and and you you only want to share that device with that computer, right? So so we yeah. would need that the the secondary uh, you know password protection for that as well. So yeah. th those are your options. But the, the very the very safe it is stuff you, you you can do is uh, is with the Wi-Fi password. Uh, my advice is to choose a. a, a, a a very very robust one if you if you are 
reasonably yeah. jealous, jealous of, of your data. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, any, any, the, the larger the team, typically, the more that the, 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 that becomes a concern, obviously. You know, typically, I suppose. Okay, perfect. Okay, absolutely. okay great. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next slide and kind of start to kind of close things up here a little bit, if I can make my mouse work. The, uh, the, uh, all of the things that we've talked about, um, uh, all the... Uh, all of the the links and everything we've we've chatted about uh, the presentation link to this will be all included in uh, uh, on this video when it gets placed up onto our YouTube site here in about a, about an hour or so. Um, uh, it's, it'll be our 150 51st web uh, video that we have up there. Not just all the webinars, the last 85 webinars, but uh, a lot of other good good content on on the YouTube site. So if you haven't been there or, or maybe you just visit occasionally, go ahead and subscribe to it and. Uh, and uh, you can keep up with some of the stuff that we've been adding up there. The, uh, and this one will be up there in just a moment. The, um, uh, we're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics, as we like to say, and, and uh, love that we're able to chat with you guys on the webinars and out at the track. It's that time of year we're starting to be able to travel, do some different things. I've got an event uh, scheduled here in the uh, next two or three weeks, so I'll be traveling too. So uh, looking forward to getting outside and, uh, and uh, getting back to doing some of the things after what we've been through for the last year. So it's going to be a good time. Uh, if you have any questions that you don't see us at the track or, or here at the webinar, give us a call at the 800 number. Uh, love to chat with you and uh, help you solve any problems you might have, any questions. So uh, what are we going to chat about next week? Next week is we're gonna we're gonna chat with our uh, a little bit deeper into our into our karting product the Micron Five. There we we've had a Micron Five for for several years and we just came out with what, uh, what is, is called the Micron Five S. And uh, what we wanted to do and and some of these topics inside the Micron Five S some of the stuff we're gonna talk about. Uh, covers over to the to the new GPS 09 and and this new Wi-Fi chip and some other things. So if you if you don't run the Micron 5, I think you'll still get value uh, from from listening to what we're going to talk about. So join us then. Uh, if you have any carding friends and uh, and they uh, would like to get some more information about carding. Uh, our carding product and some of the data that's coming out of that and what's new on it to make sure you let them know that what, uh, what we're going to do this coming week. Uh, Micron 5S, what's new? And uh, a chat between what is the Micron 5 to the Micron 5S, some of the new cool stuff that uh, is happening. We're going to have Corey. Corey Terrell is going to, uh, Roanoke uh, Tech is going to come and join us. Uh, he's, he's been working with uh, the carding data and the microns uh, pr pretty heavily recently. So uh, looking forward to having Corey join us on his first co-host role. So it, uh, we're looking forward to that. It'll be a good time. So make sure you join us next week. The uh, oops, contact information for uh, myself, Jeff, Emiliano. Uh, if you have any questions about what we talked about, what, you know, if you want to talk with Jeff about uh, maybe that, uh, you know, that router that he talked about a little bit deeper, or maybe some ideas that he threw out there that you might have a question about, uh, there's his email address. Give us, give him a holler. Emiliano, of course, is, uh, you know, he's he's done ten of these. He's a uh, he, he's a he's a stud when it comes to doing these uh, doing these webinars, and we appreciate him being here all the time. Software at Aim Sportline. Uh, lots of questions on maybe some of the stuff we talked about today or Ray Studio 3 beta analysis, you know, the, the other big, uh, one of the other big projects he's working on, but he's, uh, they keep him pretty busy in, uh, in, in Milan. So it's, uh, he's, he's works on a lot of different stuff. Um, and of course my email address as well. So give us a holler if you uh, have any questions with, for, you know, via the email and uh, love, to, love to hear and answer your questions. Thanks everybody for coming. I appreciate it, Jeff. Uh, th this is, this was, this one here was a, a bit of a concern for me because it's a, it's an area that's outside of my uh, any expertise at all. So I really appreciate you holding my hand and walking not only through my problem uh, but discussing it here and showing a, our solution. So I appreciate that. And uh, and Emiliano, thank you again. It's uh, we had a huge time change between here and uh, here in Italy, and I appreciate you uh, always doing this well after hours. That's uh, you 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 go well well beyond uh, the call of duty here for us. So I appreciate that. Thanks everybody else for coming. Uh, uh, look forward to seeing everybody here on Tuesday. It's going to be a, a, another one next Tuesday. And give me a, give me a, if you have any. Uh, webinar topics. I've got two or three that are still kind of planned out there a little bit, but if you think we haven't hit on something you'd like to chat about, uh, email me uh, with webinar topics uh, moving forward. I'd uh, love to hear from you guys. I, we did get that one about the Mac use with our with our stuff, and uh, I think we'll, we'll try to fold that one in there as well somewhere. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it. and look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Thanks.